The Falcons made headlines last month when they hired Raheem Morris to be their next head coach. Moore, uh, Morris, who comes over from Los Angeles and a stint as their coordinator, excited at his introductory press conference today. We got a real clear understanding of what it looks like in Atlanta, right? We've seen it at a very high level, right? And what was Matt Ryan? You know, you're talking about just the people that you've coached. And I, you know, I just come from a real clear what it looks like quarterback when you're talking about Matthew Stafford. But when, when you get those guys that are elite processors, when you get those guys that are decision makers, when you get those guys that can just cut it loose and play ball, it, it makes you excited, right, to go out there and find those things, right? Sometimes not easy to see. Right. Obviously, you got to look at some college tape. Sometimes you can see a little bit more free agency tape. Sometimes you can visualize that thing, how you can trade. Right. But you got all those windows out there. You got all those avenues. But I got a lot of confidence in the people that are going to be able to help me and be a part of um, finding our next quarterback to, to move, move forward. I loved all the quarterback footage that our staff put together there. It just gives you like a little, uh, a little <laughs> vision of what it could be. RC, like, what <laughs> does Raheem Morris, I know, me too, Mina, what does he need to do to sort this whole thing out to have success in his first season in Atlanta? Well, I mean, you guys just had that wet dream of quarterbacks that Raheem Morris may not be able to get all of them or have an opportunity to draft one, but you can get a guy like Justin Fields because when you look at this offense from Kyle Pitts to Drake London to B. John Robinson on to Tyler Azier, they do have some talent, but they have no one that can pull the trigger that is currently on that roster. Desmond Ritter wasn't the answer. We all know what Taylor Heineke is, and so you're going to have to find a way to utilize all of these pieces. I felt like Arthur Smith maximized what he could, but unless they get someone new, at the quarterback position, this team will not be able to move forward and progress in any way. On the defensive side of the ball, you do have a star in Jesse Bates. A.J. Terrell is a top-notch corner, but you're aging up front. So this is a roster that is going to need an overhaul, and it has to start at the quarterback position. And as Raheem Morris says, it gets you excited when you have one, but you're scared as hell walking in the stadiums when you don't. <laughs> And, and he knows better than most. I mean, quarterback is largely why he wasn't successful first in as a head coach through no fault of his own in that regard. And, and when you hear him talk about it, it's very clear he understands job number one, the thing that will determine whether or not he's successful in Atlanta is whether they find uh, the guy. I, I like your suggestion of Justin Fields, Ryan, because I do think it's going to be hard for them to move up in the draft, although that's, of course, a possibility. I like it also because you really have proof of concept with the Marcus Mariota year yeah. in Atlanta, which isn't to say Mariota was great, but that run game was so dynamic. And then it really fell off this year, and it was kind of perplexing because the offensive line was the same, a lot of the personnel was the same, but I think when you no longer had a quarterback who was a dynamic dual threat, it impacted the way defenses yep. played them. Fields is more dynamic than Mariota. You'd still want to uh, elevate the passing game and develop more consistency from what we saw in Chicago. But I think with the personnel they have, with the offensive line mm. they had, they could have a very successful and efficient rushing attack at the very least with Justin Fields as a quarterback. I agree yeah. with a lot of what you guys are saying. I think Justin's name is going to be attached if it comes like that for Chicago to a lot of teams. I think as it sits right now with him bringing Zach Robinson over as his offensive coordinator from the Rams, the perfect quarterback is going to be Jaden Daniels as of right now. Now, this is why mm. Zach Robinson, who I mentioned, yeah. I love the fact of adaptation. You know, he was there with Sean McVay for the 19 and 20 seasons when they were running the, you know, the McShanahan type of scheme, the, the, the spreads or the, the stretch run and the play action pass. And then the Super Bowl year, they went to a completely different offense under Matthew Stafford. So we watched him run one offense. Okay, that, that's not the perfect offense for, for the group that we have now. Let's go to this offense. And then obviously over this past couple of years, they've gone back to a little bit of a, a morphing of that Shanahan McVay type of offensive tree. So I love the fact that he's witnessed that. The reason I say Jaden McDaniels is number one thing that's needed in that offense for a quarterback is precision. And if you got one that's precise, Brock Purdy, you're going to have a lot of success. And I think Jaden's that. The yeah. other thing I love about this, they got a good offensive line in Atlanta. If you have a good offensive line with this old school system, you can play really good as a quarterback, no matter how young you are. So I, I, I love the Zach mm. Robinson hire, and I think Jaden's perfect. Yeah, we bounced around on both sides of the football, and I agree with all that you said. I think the thing that the, the theme that came to my mind was that the cupboard is not bare in Atlanta, and no. you guys have alluded to it from an offensive standpoint. And RC mentioned the defense aging, 
but it's almost like you want that type of situation walking in. Obviously, Grady Jarrett is going to come off of an injury. Remember, they went and got David Anyamata up front as well. They're going to have to make it see what Calais Campbell is going to do. And I bring all of these guys that are aging up is because your first year as a head coach in a new in a new environment, you're trying to implement an identity of how you want to play football. Those type of guys buy in quickly because they want to win now. And then when you get to the point of those guys buying in and obviously figuring out the quarterback spot, you look at this division. This division is still up for grabs, y'all. Yeah. Like Tampa was solid and went to yeah. the playoffs and Baker played well, but you could potentially be a quarterback and a good scheme with all those guys buying in away from owning that division when you think about the potential of his first year in Atlanta being a success. If they get Justin Fields, they have a real shot at winning the NFC South. And for Raheem Morris, he has to be in that same line of thought with what he's watched in this division based on last year with what he has in the cupboard coming to Atlanta. Yeah, the thing with Justin that you're going to have to pay attention to, Atlanta, anywhere else, is what's it going to cost to get him? And then you really have a, a year yeah. to make a massive decision on how much it's going to potentially cost you. I, I like their offense. Yeah. I think two things. Kyle Pitts has got to get healthy. Yeah. And for this offense to really go to where I think it can, they got to find their Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua kind of inside slot guy opposite or with Drake London.